Next, let's see what happens when we use the star operator with lists. Previously, we saw what happens with strings. Strings are repeated. Similarly, we can use star operator with lists and uh, we can create repeating patterns uh, with the multiplication operator. So here I'm creating a pattern ABC and I want to repeat uh, this pattern three times. So when I create, when I write pattern times three and return and get back in this variable patterns, we should see a new list created wherein our original list is repeated three times. So let's execute it and check what will be the, the output. Notice the repeating pattern has our original list three times. Now the practical use of this is when we want to create a new list uh, and um, we want to repeat the same element multiple times for a fixed length. So suppose I want to create a list of ones and I know how many elements I want to have in my list. Then I can use the syntax to create seven ones. So here, when we execute this particular code, we should see seven ones to be part of our list. So the advantage is if I want to have million ones in, in the list, I don't need to write one million times uh, within square brackets. I can simply write one once and then use the multiplication operator to duplicate it a million times. Okay. Now we will see a little more uh, uh, complex thing. So I want to create a nested list here. So I want to create a matrix, which is a list of lists. We saw how to store matrices with our homework four and C++ where we used Vec3 and we created an array of Vec3 to store a matrix. Now, similarly here, first we will see how to create this matrix using a list of list using the traditional approach. And then we will see how to use list comprehension to simplify it, simplify the code. So basically I'm creating rows, rows are lists and I'm adding each row into my matrix. So my matrix has a list of lists. So it's initialized as a list, but each element of this list is also a list. So first I'm declaring two variables, which will be the number of rows and columns of my matrix. So I have two loops. The first loop is going through all the rows. The second loop is going through all the columns. So when I iterate through each new row, I'm creating a new row by creating a new list. And when I iterate through a new column, I'm simply adding an element to my row. So once I add all the elements of a column, I can simply add the row to matrix. So first let's print our matrix. We should see a five by three matrix when this particular code executes and all the elements will be zero. So notice there are uh, five rows, one, two, three, four, five, and each row has three elements. So there are three columns and all the values are initialized using zero. Now we can simplify this. So notice this is how many lines? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six lines. And we can simplify it using list comprehension and make it a single line uh, code. So here the list comprehension is also showing you an example of a nested list. So we can also do list comprehension with nested lists. So Let's break this down. So my outer list is iterating through this for loop, which is iterating over all the rows. And it is storing the element, which is also a list. And this list is now iterating through the number of rows and uh, columns. And each element within that is a zero. So let me repeat this again. So the outer square brackets is creating the matrix that will store rows. So the outer for loop is looping through all the rows and each element now is a new list and each element, each of this new list will loop through all the columns and it will create a new element to be part of this new list. 
So now when I create a matrix using the list comparison, we should simply see the same matrix again and all the elements are still zeros. So there are five rows, each, rows, each row has three elements. So we should use list comprehension whenever we can. This simplifies our uh, code, makes it more readable and also will be easy to maintain. Now here I'm using the format method again, simply to print the um, size of the matrix. We have two placeholders created using these uh, places. We already know the size is five by three, so this will simply uh, print our matrix sizes five cross three. Now we can use the square brackets operator again to access individual elements of our matrix. So the first square brackets operator will give us the third row. The second square brackets operator will give the uh, element which is in the first second column. The first index of the first column is zero, index of the second column is one. So when we access matrix of three, three, one, we are accessing the fourth row and second column element. Now I want to change the element which is stored at fourth row and second column to be equal to five. So let's see what will be the matrix when I update it with the single value. Now notice this is the zeroth row, first row, second row, third row, and within third row, the first position value is equal to five. Okay, so to modify an, an element, we can simply access that particular element using the square brackets operator and use the assignment operator to assign a new value. Now, suppose I want to create a new matrix instead of using uh, initializing all the elements with zeros, I want to initialize it with some random integers. To do that, I can use this inbuilt module called random. So in C++, we were using hash include to include some standard library uh, files that would help us to use some inbuilt functionalities. Similarly, in Python, we can use what's known as import. The import will simply uh, provide us a way to access all the functions that are defined within this particular module. We will see what modules are and how to create them later. For now, think about these as a, a, a program that implements a certain set of functions. When we use import followed by the module name, it will provide us a way to ask, call these functions uh, that are defined within the module. We already saw how to use the square root and the floor function which was defined in the math module. Similarly, now we will see how to use the random number generator module to randomly create integers between 1 and 100. So the syntax is first we write the module name in which a particular function is defined and then we call that particular function using the dot operator. So module name dot function name rand int is the function which is defined inside this module random. It takes two arguments. The first argument is the start index integer. The second argument is the end integer. So I want this particular function to return a random integer that is between one and 100. So the syntax is same as before here. All I'm doing is I'm replacing zeros with a random integer between one and 100. Now let's see what will be our matrix with the rand end. Notice this is our new matrix. This time it has uh, random integers between one and 100 as the elements of the matrix and not all zeros. Now I want to create the transpose of this matrix. To do that again, we can simply use list comprehension. So for transpose, we need to flip rows and columns. So now my outer for loop is looping through all the columns and each element is again a list and the contents of this list loops through all the rows and for each row it picks up the corresponding value from the original matrix so let me repeat so i'm creating again 
a new matrix using list comprehension. Since the transpose matrix needs to flip rows and columns, the outer for loop is now looping through all the columns. Each item is still again uh, still a list, and the element of this list is uh, filled by looping through all the rows, and each new element that will be added to the list is the corresponding value in the row and column in our original matrix. So let's execute the code, print the transpose and verify this is doing the right thing. Okay, so notice now the transpose has three rows and five. Each row has five elements. So three rows and five columns. So let's simply verify the first row. So 32, 15, 82, 98 and 6 should be the first column. So 32, 15, 82, 98, 6 is the first column in our transpose. Great. So this showed us how to uh, write code in a uh, compact way by using nested list comprehension. Again, whenever possible, we should use list comprehension to make our code more readable and maintainable. We can use the traditional way of writing for loops. This would probably take about 8 to 10 lines to create this uh, matrix and a transpose. And uh, notice how simple it is by using list comprehension. Once we understand the syntax, it is pretty much uh, uh, pretty easy to create a new matrix, a new lists using list comprehension. Now finally, we will end this uh, class by playing a simple game. Most of you probably are familiar uh, with this game. The, the game is known as Fizzbuzz. And the rules of the game is, game is as follows. Each player will um, should provide uh, a number beginning from 1. Each player should provide an integer beginning from 1. And the next player will uh, provide the next integer 2 for example and suppose um, the integer is divisible by 3 the player should say fizz suppose the integer is divisible by 5 the player should say buzz and suppose integer is divisible by both 3 and 5 the player should say fizz buzz so notice some examples so player 1 will say 1 player 2 will say 2 Player 3 should say fizz because 3 is divisible by 3. Player 4 will say 4. And now let's say there are only 4 players and it goes back to player 1. Player 1 should say buzz because 5 is divisible by 5. Similarly, let's see what happens when a particular player gets 15. 15 is divisible by both 3 and 5. So when a player gets 15, he or she should say fizz buzz. So this is the, the game. Now let's see how to implement this in Python using lists. So I've implemented this uh, game in two ways. The first way is using list comprehension. Second way is using the traditional for loop. So first we will go through the solution using list comprehension. The solution is pretty simple. So I'm looping through an integer sequence which begins from 1 to 31, which means that there are 30 turns in this particular game. Let's say there are two players and 30 turns in total. So each player gets 15 turns. And we want to print the response of a particular player at uh, a particular turn. So we will loop through all the turns by using this integer sequence 1 to 30. And in each turn, we will first check whether that particular turn is divisible by 3. So i mod 3 equal to equal to 0 will tell us whether that particular turn is divisible by 3. If it's divisible by 3, we will get a 1. So we will multiply uh, fizz with 1, which means it's repeating fizz once. And then we will check whether that particular turn is divisible by 5. If it's divisible by 5, we will again get a 1. So we will multiply buzz with 1 and then add both of them. So suppose a num uh, turn is divisible by 3 and divisible by 5, for example, 15. Um, 
this will this expression will evaluate to fizz this expression will evaluate to buzz and then fizz plus buzz is simply concatenating both the strings so we will get fizz buzz and so this expression will evaluate to fizz buzz and we have an or here so if this expression gives us anything other than zero we will print that or we will put that as the element of the list otherwise we will simply put the integer as the element of our list so suppose our turn is one one mod three is not equal to zero so this evaluates to zero one mod five is still not zero so this again evaluates to zero zero plus is zero is zero so this expression is zero on the right hand side we have one and one or zero will be one so we will put one as the first element of our result similarly two two mod three is still not equal to zero so fizz times zero plus again bus times zero since two mod five is still not equal to equal to zero and zero plus zero is still zero zero or two is now when we get the third index 3 mod 3 is equal to equal to 0 so fizz times 1 plus bus times 0 or 3 so here we have fizz or 3 so the uh, output will be fizz so next let's let's execute this code and verify whether this is going to give us the right answer okay now notice first turn is one second turn is two third turn is fizz fourth turn is four fifth turn is buzz sixth turn is fizz because it's divisible by three then it's seven eight nine is divisible by three ten is divisible by five so it's a buzz eleven twelve is divisible by three thirteen fourteen fifteen is divisible by both three and five so it is fizz buzz so in one single line we can implement this particular game so uh, python is really powerful and if we know how to use uh, the inbuilt data structures we can uh, write such simple programs to to um, create the games that we've played uh, before now let's simply rewrite this code by using a more traditional approach so in c++ we will write something like this wherein i'll create a for loop which is going from 1 to 30 and first we will create an empty string outside the loop i've created a new variable which will hold a list of elements so each new iteration creates an empty string if the current index is divisible by 3 we will add fizz to our string if the current index is divisible by 5 we will add bus to our string so if both the conditions are satisfied the string will be equal to fizz bus if neither condition is satisfied the string will be empty if only one of the condition is satisfied it will be either fizz or bus so we can check whether our string is uh, empty if it's empty we will reap replace the string with our integer i so here notice even though we initialize string initialize this variable str as, as a string we can write an integer value to it so python supports this casting and simply at the end of this if condition we can add whatever is str to our fizzbus loop list so if it's divisible by 3 we will add fizz if it's divisible by 5 we will add buzz if it's divisible by 3 and 5 we will add fizz buzz if it's divisible by neither 3 or 5 we will simply add the integer to our fizz underscore buzz underscore loop list so this should simply print the same same thing again notice again we get the exact same result as the list comprehension this comprehension was one single line versus about uh, eight to ten lines for the other way here i'm simply comparing whether these two lists are the same using the equal to equal to operator so that 
we don't have to individually look at each element we can simply see whether we see a true or false notice comprehensions is equal to equal to loop so the response is true which means both of these methods gave us the same end result so the takeaway is whenever we can we should try to use list comprehension this simplifies our code makes it more compact more readable and uh, more maintainable it's important to understand the the syntax and uh, once you uh, go through a few more examples uh, if you have any confusions even after this class it should be uh, cleared so this ends our topic on lists lists again is the most commonly used data structure in python it lets you use it lets you store an ordered collection of uh, items lists are iterable so we can iterate through lists using the in keyword we can iterate through multiple lists using zip function we looked at several different inbuilt functions that are as part of this class list that can help us simplify our code in in your homework and in the next few classes we will use these functions we will use list comprehension so hopefully uh, these concepts should be clear uh, in a few more uh, classes next time we will begin with uh, tuple we will see how to create a new tuple we will see what's the difference between a list and a tuple remember in this class we saw uh, tuple twice so when we called the enumerate function the written value of the enumerate was a tuple again when we uh, saw the zip function the written value was a tuple so in the next class when we see tuple it should be clear what these tuples are and how we can use tuples in our programs